tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Alam mo, nung, nung may, may isang beses, there was one time that actually that was discussed by uh, a lot of Filipino singers who eventually formed the Organisasyon ng Pilipino Mga Awit. Uh, for the simple reason that, um, does it only encompass that the timeline of of when when popular Philippine music really got uh, the opportunity to really shine across the entire uh, spectrum of society? Kasi kung matatandaan yung mga kaibigan, uh, nung mga dekada 40-50, ang mga kinakanta at narinig sa radyo ay puro mga kantang banyaga. At kung may mga kantang dikha ng mga Pilipino man na inyong maririnig, ay ito ay transitions or mga adaptation na kinanta, kinanta ng mga Pilipino, kinanta ng Pilipino, pero ito po ay original na mga gawa, original na mga komposisyon na hawig o galing sa mga kantang galing sa Amerika na itrinanslate sa wikang Pilipino. So, hindi pa rin bubusang original. Hindi ba? Palaki ng impluensya ng mga Amerikano sa atin. Lalong-lalo na nung panahon nung ikalawang digmaang pandaigdig at even post-war. Ang Pilipino ay naging tanyag sa, sa buong Asia sa pagiging napakagaling sa larangan ng musika. Mapa, mapa sa kantahan or mapa sa pagtugtog ng instrumento. Uh, nanjan ang mga nanjan ang mga tutad nila uh, ng mga pamilya Cruz. Pamilya ko si Tita Pilita, Corales. Tita. Oh. Uh, ang mga pamilya Herrera, mga well, Chonko Brothers, ano na yan, 60s na yan eh. Pero oh. post war, in the post war era, a lot of the American servicemen who were 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 stationed in Manila were also good musicians and they started jamming with the local musicians that we had here who were able to like learn from these people, learn from the Americans as to how to better play their instruments better, how to create better music, how to create more commercial sounding works. So, yeah. naging, naging, oh, na, naitaas yung antas, tumaas yung standard ng, ng quality of music. That's why when you have uh, your, your, our grandparents, our great-grandparents constantly talking about how they would hear of stories of musicians in Japan, in Hong Kong, in the major Asian capitals in the world, which up to now, I mean, up, up until the time of COVID, were, were, were basically full of, or, or there, were, there were a lot of Filipino musicians who were really popular, who were patronized. Uh, by 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 these localities. So, ang masasabi ko lang dyan, ang, 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 ang ating musical heritage as not only performers, but also eventually as uh, creators of music has been has been very, very rich. At hindi lang po sa popular music. Pati po, kung, kung kayo po ay may oras makinig ng mga lumang kundiman, ay nako, masasabi nyo, pag, kasi pag medyo bata kayo, hindi, hindi, kayo, hindi nyo matataypan yan eh. Pero ako ngayon, ako, I'm, I'm confessing now. I am now in the in, at the stage when in, I am now looking for old kundimans. Yun na ang pinapakinggan ko. Yun na yung, yun na yung nag-i-enrich ng tenga ko. Dahil nung kabataan ko, wala pa ako, di pa ako pinapanganak. <laughs> no, something welcome. It's such a welcome auditory experience to to learn and to absorb all that all that talent all that creativity uh, from from decades back which will i'm sure enrich what i already am have, have already consumed in my lifetime lahat tayo kumbaga ano tunawang puso lahat ng pilipino natunaw ang puso sa boses ng basil at alam mo yung beauty ng kantang yon mapababae man o lalaki ang makadinig Pag nahugot mo, relate pa dyan, matutuwa ang mga relate na relate na talagang ma-express. Sa totoo lang, ang daming OPM songs of the 70s, 
Talagang ganun. Ganun ang talagang kuhang-kuha nila yung nasa puso ng mga mm-hmm. tao at that time. Uh, And it was right. so unique. Right. It really captured. Right. Right. It right. captured the, 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 the feeling of the 70s. The, our, our teenage years and the society at that time were, were really able to relate. Like the songs of Basel, the songs of Didi Treyas. It's great that you mentioned it. Wow. That. Yes. Oh my God. Did it songs? I really... Alam mo, Rico, Rico as a uh, performer for me was one of those rare talents that uh, was born out of sheer hard work. Kasi po mga kaibigan, si Rico po, no, hindi po biglang sikat yan eh. Uh, si Rico po, nung nakilala ko siya, isikat na yan. Pero nung makadaupang palad ko yan, when I had the opportunity of, uh, of, of breaking bread with him, uh, hanging out with him, Rico at times would share stories of, of how his rise to fame was. Uh, Rico was not hindi kagwapuhan. <laughs> Yun na para rin namin pinag-uusapan. Para hindi naman ako. Para hindi naman ako gwapo eh. May ginabas ko dito eh. Para hindi naman ako gwapo eh. Kaya lang, may hindi naman ako kumanta. Diba? Diba para? So, Rico, But, Rico is one of the nicest persons. The mere, uh, the mere mention of Luneta, diba? And, and, the, and the phrase na kahit walang pera, that wow. resonated with your mass base. With every Pinoy. Diba? Wow, But, the simplicity... Diba? The simplicity of it na, na kaya kong maging masaya hama ko, kasama ko ang aking minamahal sa buhay kahit wala kami pera basta kasama ko minamahal ko sa buhay maganda ang mundo Stay tuned for the next episode only here on V81 Radio Manila